We're getting very close to the launch of Star Wars Squadrons, but one aspect about Squadrons stands out to be the forefront of the game's experience, that being teamwork. Aside from the single player, the main aspect of the game is multiplayer, and those playing will have to play with others, even against AI. But what's the best team composition for a team of five in Squadrons? Just because the game hasn't come out yet, doesn't mean we can't use our Star Wars knowledge and experiences in Battlefront 2's Starfighter Assault game modes to get a clear understanding of what would be the best team comp for fleet battles and ranked game modes in squadrons. For those of you a little bit out of the loop, there are four main classes per faction, fighter, bomber, support, and interceptor, each having a crucial role to the team. You don't have to have one of each, but because there are five players per team, you'll have to double up in one class at the very least. So in today's video, we're gonna explore the best compositions your team could use to be the most effective in games and gain more wins. Now, I must stress, everything here is educated guesses based off some minor canon lore of Star Wars and mostly on Eckhart Ladder's hands-on with the game earlier last month. Not to mention, there won't be one exact team comp that beats all. This game's meta changes based on the components offered for each class, the enemy comp, and map control. We'll get to those aspects later in the video. But before I jump into the topic, my question of the day is, what will be your secondary class in Star Wars Squadrons? Whilst I could choose Fighter, Interceptor is my primary class, so I doubt I'll be very helpful, let alone compatible, in most team comps with that choice. So understandably, I'd most likely choose support, as I'd rather like to help my teammates rather than rely on them, which is where the bomber class falls in my opinion. But what about you? Let me know in the comments down below. We read all of them and try to get back to some of you. Also, if you love all things Star Wars Squadrons, Empire of War, and just Eckhart's Ladder, Corey Loses, and myself, playing games like Mario Kart or Fall Guys, definitely hit that subscribe button. We have plenty of cool stuff coming your way. Now, on with the video. The early game will likely have both teams on a very equal playing field, and because the objectives are not that attainable in the first few minutes of the game, it's likely to see little to no bomber classes played at the beginning of the match, excluding players who decide to fit their bombers with better dogfighting capabilities to utilize their huge damage outputs. But that aside, we're either likely to see a double up in fighters and interceptors, or possibly even support. The variation really comes down to the effectiveness of the component trees for support players, as it's very different from fighters and interceptors, as they are likely to share the same component trees due to the similarities to one another. So the main objective at this moment is to eliminate enemy player ships while staying alive yourself, and temporarily gaining a numbers advantage to push through to the enemy side of the map and then begin objective control. Early game deaths slash kills could make or break a team in many online multiplayer team games, which is why you might be expected to play very defensively and cautiously for the first three to five minutes. Expect very similar team compositions between both teams at this point in time, with very little changes until the mid game rolls in. So again, double ups on fighters and interceptors, or possibly supports, are very likely. If you find yourself in a 1v1 where you're getting pretty outplayed, whether that be a counter to your component's tree setup or the player is just generally better than you, which is a totally acceptable way of thinking, mind you, then disengaging and locating other opponents or seeking assistance might be the best option first, before swapping out classes or even dying, as your team really cannot afford a 4v5 whilst you're in the middle of changing class or waiting for a respawn timer. Not to mention, the morale bar is so important here. Not only does dying cause a numbers advantage to the enemy, it also adds a significant amount of morale points in their favour, allowing subsequent kills to follow. Remember, the enemy will try to maximise their small advantage window whilst they have it. The mid game is likely where you're going to see the most variation in team compositions, as the risk might not have as much of a fallout as early or late game does. If you're dominating the game, you may see your team double up on Y-Wing or TIE Bombers, just to get the job done quicker before any chance of a comeback. If you see your opponents running one of each class and an extra interceptor, your best bet might be to mirror that also. I'm unable to, at this time to give an accurate idea of what is even a good suggestion. TIE Fighters, TIE Bombers and TIE Interceptors have no shielding and I'm unsure if that type of micromanaging is even going to have that much of an effect on how games play out in squadrons. But what I can say confidently is do not feel you should be pressured into being a fighter instead of an interceptor when they're already two in you. Fighter and Interceptor gameplay really boils down to preference and not by expectation of the class. Just understand that picking an Interceptor relies on you taking out enemy players so that your teammates can secure objectives. 
as interceptors are really weak against capital ships. The gameplay is likely to be considered more fun as it's harder to be killed and slipping behind cover to avoid tracking missiles is a breeze. But Squadrons is a team game. You always do best to understand at least two different classes, especially when playing alone. I could see well communicating, high skilled, tentative teammates work in which the bomber is being well supported across the map to the objective line. Bombers are incredibly slow and really rely on TIE Reapers and U-Wings to survive and fighters or interceptors to fend off enemies, which is why two bombers in a team composition may be very uncommon. But again, this comes down to factions, I feel. The X-Wing could feel sluggish to some players when compared to the more nimble Imperial TIEs, but its multi-role abilities could be more effective in more unique situations. And because they're decent performance in dogfights, Three fighters in a composition isn't out of the question. Just unlikely, as many are going to favour the A-Wing or TIE Interceptor. Double support is tricky to suggest in my opinion. They're absolutely crucial to a team's composition, but to double up on them really relies on the components tree and their ability to disengage fights when they're alone. But I will say in my opinion, the support class is likely a dark horse in terms of how high the skill ceiling will go for these type of players. Whilst it's easy to visualise an A-Wing or TIE Interceptor players dominating the battlefield and essentially carrying their team to victory, I think there's a possibility that it'll likely fall on the support more than anything. Their speed allows them more movement across the map and can react quicker when they can tell players are in need, as well as be able to read their surroundings better. So to have two of them on one team comp doesn't necessarily make much sense to me, especially if that support player is extremely skilled. Not to mention that a single support ship is effective in all stages of the game's longevity. Late game really comes down to the team's map control at that moment in time. If the enemies push back to their capital ship, it's likely they will drop a bomber for an extra fighter or interceptor so they can prioritize killing the enemy team and defending the hard points of its capital ship. Late game really comes down to the team's map control at that moment in time. If the enemies are pushed back to their capital ship, it's likely they will drop a bomber for an extra fighter or interceptor so they can prioritize killing the enemy team and defending the hard points of their capital ship. But if the enemies have the map control advantage and have you pushed up, they may attempt hard bombing runs with two bombers to finish the job and win the game. There is a possibility that as your capital ship loses more and more hard points and health, that the enemy could start swapping out to a five-man bombing spree. Five-man bombers may be slow, but their toughness may take your focus away from other bombers that might slip by and finish the job. I couldn't see any other variations in really one objective on either side of the team at this point, and most of the team will be grouped. Overall, I think most games will see minimal variation in team composition. One of each class and an extra interceptor or fighter is likely to be the most common, but players who use communication before the match begins may attempt a premeditated run at your objectives. So be aware of any team comps that do not always follow the norm. Either way, I think my question of the day actually suggests a rule that you might want to follow, which is what will be your secondary class in Star Wars Squadrons? Ideally, you're going to want to hone your skills with at least two classes on either faction, unless you're always going into a full five-man team every time you play, which is pretty rare for most players anyway. You have to make sure you're able to compromise and slip into existing team comps with players you're not in Discord or just playing on your own on console. But that does come to the end of the video. Really interested to hear your thoughts on the question of the day. But also, if you have more time to spare, why not check out our video on Super Mario 64? We cover all the leaks of Mario 64's beta builds of the game that dropped last month. And trust me, there is so much content that will blow your mind. Links to that video in the description and in the top right info card, which is showing now. But other than that, I have been Charlie, you've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.